What's going on guys? This is Tony Hannity's and Sean Wilburn and welcome to the Wireless Weekly, part of the LTG Network. The show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free Audible trial at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Over 100,000 books to choose from, including some of your favorite books like The Hunger Games, Fifty Shades of Grey, and anything vampire related. So. <laughs> I'm your host, Tony Hannity's, and uh, like I said earlier, Sean Wilburn's here with me tonight. How you doing, Sean? I am doing well. How about yourself, Tony? I'm good. I'm good, man. Um, so let's go ahead and let our listeners and uh, viewers know. To get in contact with us, you can always call us at 707-722-5299 or email us at comments at lazytechguys.com. So those are the two best ways to contact a whole group. Uh, and we have some other ways, obviously, Twitter, Facebook, and we'll get into that later. But uh, before we get started with the whole show, we're going to talk about two giveaways. So first and foremost, we talked about this a number of times. The Un Bobbin or Petite Bobbin for Infused Chicken is still running. And we have like six days left, maybe five days as of now. And it's very, very simple to enter. And we had nine of these to give away. Petite ones, Un Bobbins, uh, and ones for the iPhone, and ones for anything micro USB. So there's that giveaway. And then we got a giveaway from our friends from Masubo. And we've got two cases for the Galaxy S3. One is the lime green rubber band. The other one is the white mummy. And uh, the winner gets both. So I know some of you are commenting saying that you want this one or I want that one. You get both. So it doesn't really matter what you say. If you win, yeah, you win. Oh, we can't, we can't award two people with one. Well, I was asking. One. Uh, well, no. The way that the way that we were gonna lay it out was one person gets two. Gotcha. Okay. Just to honestly, just to kind of get the ball rolling, get it out of here. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So there's gonna be a lucky person with two different cases, and then I checked out both cases for anyone who knows. Um, they're both very cool. But Bet personally, between those two, I actually like the mummy a little bit more because it's a little bit more simpler. But the rubber band was definitely more durable. That thing felt strong, and they both come with little. Allow you to set your phone up, so pretty cool. The rubber band has a cute girl in the back. Yeah, and that too. <laughs> I'm just saying. What's on the other one? A mummy. Oh, there you go. A mummy. Yeah, it makes sense. Someone's mummy. Mummy, mummy, lime green, girl. All right. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to mobile announcements. There's a lot of announcements today, so we're gonna get the ball rolling with Windows Phone 8. John? Yeah. Now, uh, there's been a lot of Windows Phone 8 uh, announcements that have been made today. So we're going to start off with the uh, pre-orders. Yes, pre-orders are finally going to start happening on October 21st, and that is in preparation for the October 26th launch date. Now, um, there's been a variety of ones that are coming out, like the Nokia, Nokia Lumia 920 and the HTC 8X, um, but there's actually, well... A lot more happening besides just that. So first off, if you're interested in those phones, pre-orders are starting on the 21st. Now, if you're if you're interested or if you use T-Mobile, looks like you guys are going to get a different phone that's going to be called the Lumia 810, which is exactly the same as the Lumia 820, only it's going to come in two colors instead of the variety of colors that I'm going to mention very shortly on the next uh, topic. Um, so this one, this phone here will come with a 4.3 inch screen. It has interchangeable co covers, and the covers seem to be cyan or black. Um, and it will support other things like uh, wireless charging and other cool panorama shots and group shots and other cool features there. Um, you know, keep checking back with us and we'll keep on updating on all the features that you're going to get out of these phones. But if you're a T-Mobile user, you're not getting left out. You're doing pretty good. You're getting a little love there. And of course, AT and T gets a little bit of everything, and they're back at it again. And they're getting the low, they're getting the 920, and they're getting the 820, which, as I just mentioned, is the same as the 810 that I just talked about a minute ago. Now, both of these headsets will be available. Um, they're going to stand alongside with the 8X from HTC, and um, it's going to come in a whole mess of colors. And if I can get that list of colors here, which was uh, oh, here we go. The colors look like they're going to be red, black, white. Uh, which is written white twice on the article, by the way, yellow and cyan. <laughs> and those are going to be the colors that's available. So if you're a Windows Phone person, if AT&T, T-Mobile, congratulations. There are some stuff happening. October 21st, start your pre-orders and start picking them up on the 26th. Cool. So not, they're not the only guys who have announcements. LG's at it too. 
Yeah, so LG has a number of announcements for a number of the um, a number of the carriers here in the United States. So the LG Optimus G. Now this is the phone that uh, Sean and I have been conversating about. One of the biggest selling points of it is its 13 megapixel camera. Also the fact it's going to be the first phone in the United States that sports a quad core processor on 4G LTE. So that's going to AT&T and Sprint. Also recently T-Mobile announced a mid-level phone called the LG Optimus L9. So um, there's really not much that you you know you you need to write home about the L9 but for those of you that are looking for a kind of mid-grade phone um, the specs on this guy it's it does have a dual core processor with one gig of RAM it's a 5 megapixel camera 4.5 inch screen and it's going to have LG's quick memo software DLNA connectivity Dolby sound Wi-Fi calling part of uh, T-Mobile and Bluetooth 3.0. So there's no word on the actual launch date and how much it's going to be. Um, oh, it's also going to have uh, Android 4.0. So no launch date or anything like that, but we'll keep we'll definitely keep you uh, posted on that. And then also something that kind of came out of left field was the LG Mock for Sprint. Um, I have never heard of, of this phone until today, but um, essentially uh, the phone is is an LTE QWERTY keyboard slider phone. So um, it, it's it's got a physical five row. Or actually, it's a one, two, three, four. Yeah, five row keyboard uh, with the actual numbers at the top, so you don't have to hold down shift or anything like that, which is definitely very handy. Also has Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich, a 1.2 dual core gigahertz processor. Uh, OMAP 4 Texas Instrument uh, quad core, uh, sorry, dual core processor, and um, the front of it, aside from the keyboard, the front of it looks very much like the LG Optimus VU, um, <laughs> but you now have the physical keyboard. So, so that's it. And again, no price on that or actual date for Sprint, but we'll let you know. All right. Now, Samsung has also announced the Galaxy camera. Now, this is an announcement. Price has not been stated in any way. Um, but this is going to be just an Android-based camera that, if I remember right, can run apps. So it seems to be a kind of like a, a phone with a really badass camera and a lack of, um, well, phone. Yeah, but with a big yeah. So it's this um this uh <laughs> this Galaxy camera is gonna have it's gonna run Android four point one jelly bean, uh four point eight inch screen, one gigahertz one gigahertz quad core processor, and it's gonna have a sixteen megapixel camera, and it's also gonna have a twenty one optical zoom on that. It's gonna feature uh, it's kind of camera features like buddy share and share shot, but these are like features that allows people with the same camera to share things with people with the same camera. Which I find emailing, just texting it to each other seems. To well, be no, you well. you can you can partic participate in that. I can. You can. And all the and the two people are going to win those. Gal and that person's going to win that Galaxy case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's actually somebody up in um, Windsor that's really trying to win it. All right. Well, you know, that's good luck, guys. <laughs> now, the one thing about this that they did not announce, which is the thing that I was most curious about, which is the price. We don't know. Yeah. So um, my guess, actually, Tony, I'm gonna throw a guess out there. My guess is it's gonna cost 200 bucks. No, actually, wait, 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 no. No, it's gonna cost 250 bucks, dude. On That's a contract, I sound. It's not gonna be subsidized. It's gonna be 250 bucks unsubsidized. Unsubsidized. Well, or maybe 200 if they can get the price down. But I think 250. I, I think 250 is reasonable. I mean, if you mm -hmm. think about like you know, a Galaxy Player, which is like basically a glorified MP3 player. Right. Um, that's about two, two hundred, two fifty. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think oh, if I could, if I remember correctly. Then. And so, in in the point and shoot cameras, like the good ones, this yeah. one has like a thirteen or sixteen megapixel camera, something like that. So, you know, the good ones are gonna have around that price, that sort of price range. So, now if they were to unsub, if they were to subsidize it and bring it down to like a hundred bucks. Do you think people would buy it, or do you think people will buy it for the $250 price without a contract and not really worry about data connectivity? Because that's one reason why it's on AT&T is because when you're outside a Wi-Fi network and you want to you know, share those photos over a data connection like email or Instagram or things of that nature, that's why their HSPA Plus radios are going to be there to help yeah. you out. Yeah, point there. Well, it's I don't know. I 
you know what? Looking at it and considering what you just said, what the price of the other Galaxy thing is, actually, you're right. I think this actually gonna be three hundred. I dude, uh, I just I think they're gonna do it, and then maybe uh, they'll have subsidies. Uh, and stuff. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. I I hurt you, but you also know what I hurt? My ears, which I forgot to put my headphones on. So hang on. Everybody, watch me do this. Turn off my speakers. Watch me do this. 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 No, and I can't hear anything because I forgot to plug them in. Watch me do this. Watch me do this. Watch me do this. Watch me do this. Awesome. I was doing that for like 15 seconds. All right. Yeah, I could see you doing it, but I didn't hear you doing it. <laughs> All right, so Samsung and Sprint have also announced another Galaxy Tab. This is a, another Galaxy Tab 2 10.1 coming out now in Sprint. This is going to ship with Android 4.0, 10.1 in screen, 1 gigahertz processor, a lot, a lot of same old features that makes this a really, really cool tablet. And um, no price. Again, seem to be a lot of that happening around here. I don't know why. But even more crazy, as Samsung, again, has been continually going crazy over here, it looks like the Galaxy Note 2 is coming this fall. And it's, so far, the leaks are saying the 24th of October. Um, this is going to be, well, the next version of their huge, um, I'm not saying that word, but the 5 point was it 5.5 inch screen AMOLED display <laughs> stylus no uh, yeah it's going to run jelly bean it's going to be pretty cool so it's come, supposedly comes this fall yay cool. i'm excited hey did you know i actually ran into a guy like right after i did the review of the other T-Mobile Galaxy Note i actually ran into a person at my job who had a Galaxy Note <laughs> And I was asking, I was like, hey, so what do you think of that thing so far? He's like, honestly, dude, I haven't figured anything out on it and everything. And then, I, <laughs> and then he just starts saying, like, why are you as techy as me? You know, then I asked him, I was like, and then he says, let me go text something. He starts trying to type it. I'm like, why don't you just use the voice function? He was like, what? I showed it to him. He's like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's how amazing when you can be that person's savior for the day where that you teach him that one little thing, you know, teach a man to fish, right? And yeah. they're like, oh, my God, this guy's a genius. Like, <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, I'm going to play Tony here for a minute, and I'm going to say this. Let's see. Let's, let's go over the carrier news. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I tried. <laughs> All right, so carrier news. AT&T, if you're an AT&T customer and you're looking to get a new phone, FYI, they're changing their return policy. Yes, big changes. Oh, is that the ad that shows up on your screen, Tony? I got a boot. I got a Nordstrom's. All right, out of mind. <laughs> you got true value. Anyway, so um, AT and T, they're changing their return policy from 30 days to 14 days. This is going to go in effect as of October 7th, which is let me see here. Today being the <laughs> 9th means that this has already gone into play. So boom, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how so we do it. We're now, from the past. <laughs> <laughs> this affects everybody but business customers. For some reason, their business people are not getting affected by this. Um, but when you really think about it, how long does it take to find out you don't like something? 30 days? One? Tony? You, usually, like my experience being in retail, what I've found out is that people that really, really like don't like their device, they'll know within five days. Yeah. For those people that wait to the last minute to like return something it's kind of been a reason of a financial thing it's like mm -hmm. I really like this but I can't really afford it like I, I've kind of, I've come across that many many a times um, but at the end of the day um, I think 14 days is good uh, a good amount for those of you that really want to have 30 days just buy your phone on Best Buy or something or Amazon and go through like a third party uh, dealer and, and get it from them if you really need 30 days but I think 14 days um, by this time should be enough because if you're new to the smartphone world you probably play with your friends iPhones or Android or, or, or Windows phone and you figured out which OS you want and well at least hopefully so what I'm trying to get at is do your research mm. don't go to the store and just say oh, I'm gonna grab this phone and see how I like it now just do your research do what you're supposed to do and um, and hopefully your first choice is the right choice but don't go when they're flying blind it's, that's that's not a good idea. And plus, I, you know, c c companies do lose a lot of money for returning phones because they they can't mm -hmm. resell it. They can't resell yeah. the phones. So not those phones true. that you return go back into as warranty replacements. And even though you, even though I only had the phone for two days and I returned it, you get the phone as a warranty replacement. You think it's a dud? No, not dud. I just didn't like the phone. 
because you expect a brand new phone under warranty, you get all upset. You can't do that. You can't blame the company for that. Um, so at the end of the day, do your research. Don't go flying blind. And uh, yeah, take advantage of the, f of the first week as much as possible. And I understand if you're busy and you have more things to, to worry about than your brand new phone, but these days it's not just the phone. It, it's your third arm. It's, it, it's your livelihood, you know? So you want to you wanna really uh, you know, make sure that your investment, just like you would if you were to invest into a company, make sure that's a good investment. So mm -hmm. that, that's my spiel. Cool. By the way, if anyone's wondering, that's what B stocks are. Anyway, the <laughs> B stocks are return devices that they can't sell in the store. They send it back to the company, and then they sell it for cheaper, which means uh, they spend so much money on it that they want to get rid of it. So if they can reduce the amount of B stocks, then they can essentially save money to the other companies. But there you go. That looks really refreshing. Just want to let you know, Tony. All right, so <laughs> and anyone who's watching that can agree with me on that. <laughs> Water, the next great drink. All right, so Sprint is offering everybody one of the coolest things I have ever heard of in my life, and it's called Vanity Numbers. Well, I'm not saying it's the coolest thing ever, but it is pretty awesome. They're actually teaming up with a service called Star Star Me, and it's a service that allows you to choose your phone number in the name of a word, like nickname or something. So let's say if um, my name was... Boogalooga. Uh, yeah, Boogalooga. So Boogalooga, I want you to say, hey, Sean, why don't you, if, hey, if you want to call me, why don't you type in star star B-U-B, bub, and it will go straight to me and it will dial me automatically rather than having to remember my entire telephone number, all 10 digits of it. Oh, how are we going to do that? Um... So yeah, it's pretty cool, but this isn't free. Not free. It's going to cost $3 a month for Sprint users, and if you really, really want to be cool and go crazy and do quite awesome thing and probably have your own special name, like, you know what, I can actually, as I think about this now, if you're a hip-hop artist, this actually could be kind of cool. This way you can say, you can say dial star star uh, street hood or something, <laughs> and, and you never know, and it could be like goes to his voicemail or something. Well, I mean, 36 bucks a year. Gets you a get gets you a, a number that nobody's ever used before. Yeah, you know it's it's not like it's not like a number that's been recycled because mm -hmm. you know you, you 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 the numbers that you have now somebody had it like three years ago before you even got that number or what have you. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is it's a cool idea. But yeah, I you know if it, you're going to use it for a business, it's a, it's a business write off right there. Yeah, I just think it's just a cool idea this for people who really want to be cool. It's like, hey, look, check it out. Just dial star star love a man, and it goes straight to me. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> sure. Not me. I'm not doing that, guys. It's not happening, but I'm just saying. All right. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much for spreading that love, Sean. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on with Verizon Wireless. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm like, uh, all right, so Verizon Wireless is uh, got their name back in the news. They are planning to launch Voice over LTE by the end of 2013, and they're currently testing it right now. So what Voice over LTE is going to allow you to do is once the world be, uh, gets onto LTE, it's going to bring the cost of the technology a lot cheaper. So um, as as a user, what you're gonna hear is cheap. You're gonna see a cheaper bill, hopefully, and also you're going to hear a lot clearer calls and be able to do a lot more things as well too. So uh, that's gonna be awesome. Now, with that in mind too, Verizon really, really pushed forward, and they have actually gotten their what well, they're going to get their 400 market of LTE here in the United States. They're hoping to get into 400 markets by the end of the year, but they're actually going to be doing that two months ahead of schedule. So uh, there's a whole list. I'm not going to list them all, but um, just to kind of make a um, – kind of let, let you know um, – let's see here, uh, 21, so there are 21 new LTE markets um, and it, that's going to bring it to a total of 417 4G LTE markets for Big Red, so congratulations to them. Let's go ahead and move quickly over to the rumor roundup and leaks. So uh, there have been talks about a Samsung Galaxy S3 Mini and what this is supposedly, let's see, so gross, gone, klein, I don't do German, sorry. Um, 
but essentially what this is uh, going to be announced it's going to be announced supposedly on the 11th which is on Thursday and if you look at the date that's European not American so excuse me the 11th of October 2012 so in two days maybe three days by the time that you hear this <laughs> and uh, supposedly it's going to have jelly bean a uh, four inch display dual core snapdragon and a five megapixel camera so definitely not something to write home about per se I'm not sure why they would even call it a Samsung Mini, a uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 Mini. Maybe they're going to call it something else, but I can only assume they're calling it that because the the face of the screen looks the same. It's just smaller, something to that nature. <laughs> wait, wait, what is the mini size that we've been talking about here? <laughs> Are uh, we talking four, four isn't inches. Isn't that like the size of the old Galaxy phone? I w maybe I think <laughs> so I, I, Galaxy I Mini is also known as the new old iPad. Anyway, yeah. so <laughs> I just I just like Mini. When I think Mini, I kept thinking like the iPad Mini, which is going to be something like a small square this big that you can put on your wrist or something. But this isn't that Mini. Mini four inches isn't that Mini. That's that's the size of my old phone. That's just bigger than my original touch screen phone. So you know. All right, so uh, LG is back in the news with some leaks. What's up, Sean? All right, so the first leaked is some pictures of the LG Optimus Nexus. Yes, a new Nexus phone. So here, we start first with the first article, which is there were rumors that Google and LG were going to jointly announce a Nexus device at the end of this month. And would you believe it, not too soon after, leaked pictures came out. And it looks like we got this quite sleek looking phone that has three buttons at the bottom, back uh, menu and then the home button. The back of it says LG, it says in, not for sale, so this is definitely some prototype here. Google is engraved in the back of this, so this could very well be a Nexus. And some of the specs, 8 gigabytes of internal memory. We have 1.5 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro processor, two gigahertz, of, 2 gigahertz of RAM, 8 megapixel rear, uh, rear shooter, and it's supposed to have a 768 by 1184 resolution, and, well, no LTE, apparently, which, well, Tony, does that make, what, it makes sense that Sony, uh, that, Tony, <laughs> that Google would do that, like, not put LTE in one of their devices at this point, or is, do you just think they just didn't put the chip in, or? That makes um, absolutely no sense whatsoever, in my opinion. This thing will come out at a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm thinking that that that's true. Now the next rumor is okay, now if you remember back at the beginning of the show I mentioned a bunch of Windows phones and I did not mention anything for Verizon. Well, because it's all still rumored, but they are rumored to be getting the 820 Atlas, which apparently is not too different from the other 820 except for it has rounded edges. I hope Apple doesn't find out about this. Um, so it has rounded edges on there, and well, it's hopefully in the next coming weeks we'll see something. So keep your eyes, your ears open on the LTG, and we will keep you informed on that. Cool. So, so BlackBerry is back in. Uh, well, Tony, so to um, uh, oh. I'm muted, aren't I? There you go. Much there I am. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, BlackBerry is back in somebody's good gracious because um, there's been a leak photograph of a BlackBerry or of a uh, T-Mobile document that states that anybody that has a BlackBerry and um, they get unlimited text messaging but no data, uh, T-Mobile is going to allow that customer to use BlackBerry Messenger at no additional cost. This is supposed to go into effect on the 21st of October, and there's no action needed on the side of the customer. It's just going to automatically happen in the database. So, uh, yeah, I know a number of people that would probably use this to their advantage, especially if you're going to give your old BlackBerry to your kid and you're only giving them minutes and unlimited text messaging because that's all kids do. But as long as <laughs> if you want to get if you want to get in contact with your child um, and they're not answering their text for whatever reason, but they'll answer their BBM, that's the way to do it. So, yeah. That is it. So let's... Uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, take a quick break, and uh, we want to thank our sponsors, which is Audible.com. So for you listeners of the Wireless Weekly, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial 
to give you the opportunity to check out their services. They have over 100,000 books on the service, so you'll definitely find something that you like. And it works on multiple devices like Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Kindle, and um, many, many more. So to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash lazy for your free audiobook. And we thank them for being sponsors of the Wireless Weekly. So. Yay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ding. All right. So <laughs> hardware news real quick. Uh, Samsung ha is updating the Verizon Wireless Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 to Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, both the Razer i and the Razer HD have been added to Motorola's unlock program. So that means if you're a developer, um, you can unlock both of those devices, unlock the bootloader, and completely ROM it and mod it. Uh, the Pantech Burst and Element on AT&T both get ice cream sandwich. And also for AT&T, the Motorola Atrix 2 is also getting ice cream sandwich over the air. So. And uh, that's pretty much it on hardware. Let's go ahead and move on to app news. So are you a Star Wars fan, Sean? Star Wars? No, yeah, of course I am, dude. I'm, I'm one Remember, you and I have had many discussions about the latest three movies to know that, yes, I am a Star Wars fan, and I'm talking the original, not the Spanish. So <laughs> I have news for you. Yeah? On November 8th, Star Wars <gasps> is going to get an Angry Birds version. Is Or rather, Angry Birds is getting a Star Wars version. Sorry, just trying to... I was trying to throw up confetti, and all I have are my bills. Oh, yeah. That's just awkward. Okay, so, yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah so, uh, I, I guess uh, <laughs> this is just funny. What did you think? Okay, uh, okay. So the 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 game is going to be available for all the major you know, franchise, the all the major OSs, um, Android. I don't think it's coming to BlackBerry, but uh, Android, Windows Phone, I, I believe, and obviously iOS, and. Uh, Possibly consoles as well too. Uh, do you think Rovio is just kind of has nothing better to do? And there's like uh, uh, Star Wars people like that. Let's do something with Star Wars. And George Lucas is like, yeah, I, I don't mind getting a couple of more million dollars. Yeah, you guys can do Star Wars with some birds. <laughs> uh, George Lucas would do anything with Star Wars that makes him a couple million dollars. The um, even write three terrible movies. Yes, I said it. Um, the I don't know. To me, when I look at Rovio, I'm looking at him like, you guys are still... I mean, that's all you guys have. They're like a one-trick pony that has one really good trick that still sells a lot. But how... I mean, they, that Bad Piggies game came out, and I was like, oh, it's a building game. But I don't like these games. Though well, I, it's number I one. That one is number one in the uh, iOS uh, app store right now. Yeah, that's because of my name. But it's not going to carry the way that Angry Birds did. Angry Birds was a nice physics game that had a slingshot, and you just threw crap at other crap. It was almost like if you had a monkey and people, you could have slinged stuff at each other, and it would have worked, and it would have been kind of the same game. Actually, it would have been really funny at that game. Someone right. make that game. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but I don't know. I just see, like, they, they're a one-trick pony. They have angry birds and they're milking it not milking it but they're doing everything they can with it now they got a franchise with star wars they're gonna sell a couple more million there's nothing wrong with that when um the <laughs> they're gonna have probably raiders of the lost stark next and then, <laughs> i don't know man we can go at this all day long they'll probably have a rock band angry birds version where you're throwing little guitars at each other it's gonna be great dude they're gonna have angry birds everywhere i'm scared until for people, society until people get old enough and get tired of it and then i don't know what they're gonna do i really don't know I hope they can do something with the franchise they have because Angry Birds is no Mario. All right. Now, speaking of video games, since I mentioned Mario, let's talk about Sony because Sony's not Mario. Um, Sony is – oh, so Sony has a, is officially – well, not really officially announcing because they keep announcing this over and over again in different parts of the country. But they officially announced in America we are getting a PlayStation Mobile Suite, which is the old PlayStation Suite that they talked about a year ago when they were trying to – have a gaming platform for games. Now, to give people an idea of what they were aiming to do here in a very quick nutshell, they felt that on the iOS ecosystem you have a set of games, but that's just iOS. On the Android ecosystem, there's many different devices and too many different options, so it makes it very difficult to program games for them. 
Well, now with this, they're trying to make a new certification saying that if you make something to our service, it will automatically be compatible with all these devices, including all their own phones, HTC phones, like the HTC S, the V, and the One X, as well as their PS Vita devices. And I think they're going to be trying to add more and more. They're going to start off with games like Wood, Word Block, Cubics, Rebel, and Flix Hockey. Oh, and, of course, Aqua Kitty. Um, as I don't know any of these games. Anyway, you must have that game. <laughs> except for Cubics. Anyway, so they're going to do all that stuff. So that's what they're doing with it. I have a feeling, though, just on a quick side note, with them, their purchase of Gaikai, the other streaming service, which is a game service for uh, internet browsers, that they're going to find a way of use, improving this mo PlayStation Mobile with the Gaikai service to make this pr pretty much a pretty seamless service. I just hope that they can actually get games on there that people would actually want to play. That's the key. Yeah. That's the key. I don't care about any Aqua Kittens. Yeah. Don't care, don't care about <laughs> word bursting or anything of that. Aqua Kitten. Let's look at that. I don't know. Anyway. But, yeah. All right, so um, we know the whole debacle with Google Maps on iOS, and so what Google has been doing, they've been really trying to revamp their HTML5 version of Google Maps. So if you uh, point your mobile browser over to maps.google.com, uh, Google Maps on the HTML side, HTML5 side now allows you to do street view. So um, it's still kind of spunky you know it's not as smooth as, <laughs> it's not as smooth as it used to be but you know for what it is you know if you really really miss having Google Maps uh, this is at least on the on the uh, side of you know on the mobile side this is as close as you'll probably get so <laughs> sorry when you said that I like that I thought of Punky Brewster I was like spunky <laughs> I was like, what was her name again? Oh, that's right, Soleil Moon Fry. <laughs> you know, right. Yes, yes. Um, so good news for uh, for f the folks of you that are looking to, I guess, you know, try to take advantage of in-app subscriptions for certain uh, certain games or you know magazines of sorts. Google Play announces free trials. Now the free trial is only going to go on for uh, no no more than seven days. But what this means is that you can try something uh, that you've purchased in a, that you've done an in-app purchase, and if you don't like it, you can cancel the trial, and it's no cost to you. If you do like it, or if you forget about it, then it's a cost to you. So, but this is huge because this is kind of another reason why people are starting to like you know the Google Play Store versus the iOS Store because with iOS you don't like it, you're quote unquote screwed. You just don't get to, you know, return the app. You just have to keep it. So now with Google Play, you could. Not so much the app, but the in-app purchase, like if you're buying a gun or if you're buying magazine subscription, things like that. So mm -hmm. good for them. Awesome. All right. Now, Google has finally... Oh, wait, real quick. Before I talk about Google, I just want to let you know. I went on a side note. I just went to Aqua Kitty. I went to YouTube and looked it up. It's a sideways shmup. It's, it's just a side... It's a, dude, it's just no an excuse. underwater... No dude, excuse. It's an underwater shmup. No excuse. Dude. It's a shmup. It, no dude, you, Google, you, Google TV. Yeah, Google yeah. TV. Dude, I'm telling you, Aqua Kitten for Light. No, just kidding. Google um, TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Google Play. Google has finally decided to add their, their TV store, their movie store, and their music store to the Google TV. Would you believe it? Finally. So, I know. They've had it on their Android devices and everything else. So that means you can now buy, rent, uh, check out movies and music and buy stuff all on from Google TV as well as you could as well as what you could have done from your Android phone. Now, that's cool, but let's talk about the really cool features. And let's talk about Lookout 3.0. They are actually doing something really sweet. Now, for people who lose their phones here and there, they're adding a new feature called Signal Flare. Oh, actually got it rhymed. Anyway, um <laughs> here and there Signal Flare, see? Oh. Um so what happens is this. Now, if you lose your phone, you know, of course, they have services out there that will make your phone, like, send a beep or some kind of audible alert that allows you to know that something is going on. But when your battery dies or if your battery is near dead, that doesn't work anymore. Well, now they have the ability to, to, let, to kind of notify you the last known location of the phone before the battery dies. And this is pretty, pretty cool. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Unless it's someone special. ran off with their phone and they're like in one city and it's like, oh, they're in this city. No, they're three cities that way. So then yeah. you're just screwed either way. But at least Lookout's trying. You know, this is all free. So Yeah. 
Now, the uh, they also added a couple other things here. They added a new look, protection at a glance, and of course they have the um, the lost phone, dead battery thing, and you know they have a nice little uh, click with confidence, like a safe dollar function. So they have all these things in there that they've included to try to make to protect you and protect your phone. So if you're into protection or if you lose your phone a lot, look out 3.0 might be something you want to check out. Aqua Kitty. Ha <laughs> ha, I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> All right, so um, one really cool game that's finally made its way over to Android is called Plague Inc. And essentially, this is by Miniclip, and they do a lot of the Flash games that you find on your computer. And essentially what it is, is you have created a virus that has gone, well, viral. It's gone worldwide. <laughs> and um, you, uh, you, you're trying to kill people in the whole world and if you look at the screen there all the red dots there those are all the people that have been infected and it's created an outbreak and what you do is you can earn upgrades to um, change the virus so if the scientists so uh, so to speak have created a way to combat the virus that gives people fevers you can say oh well I'm gonna spend these coins to give people I don't know, uh, panic attacks or something like that, or legions, or they're going to just start vomiting and things like that. And with 6.7 billion people in the world, your job is to kill 6.7 billion people and leave nobody alive. So it's a free game, and there's some in-app purchasing that you can do. But for the free game, it's a ton of fun. I've actually downloaded it from my iPad too because I just had a, I've, I've just been having a lot of fun with it. So. I would recommend it for those of you are, that are really into kind of a strategy game because that's what this is. Aside from killing the world, it's a strategy game. So the people that you're, you're trying to uh, create a virus that is unkillable versus the people that are really trying to c create a cure for it. So give it a shot. Another game that is coming over to... Android is called Landlord. Now, Rad and I have talked about Landlord many, many times, and essentially it's Foursquare and Monopoly put together into one. And um, it's a location-based game where you can actually, quote-unquote, buy real estate in the world, and anytime somebody checks into it, you make money, just like you do in Foursquare, uh, in um, Monopoly. So, and if you, just like in Mon Monopoly, if you own all four railroad stations, the more... Uh, venues that you own of the same um, category, like if you own four schools, uh, you you know you multiply your points and things of that nature. So it's free to use on iOS and it is coming to Android. So if you go to LazyTechGuys.com, you can actually um, click on the link to get the beta invite if you want to try that out. So, Sean, maybe you. Maybe, maybe you. Maybe no. Maybe no. Okay. No. <laughs> it was worth a shot. I know. You're going to keep on trying to and, and get me and assimilate me. I know. Um, and finally for me, uh, TomTom Tom has finally got their Android app, and it isn't doing so well. I mean, this was a big deal at IFA 2012. Uh, I mean, their, their app is, uh, you know, they have uh, an actual GPS satellite versus using cellular, cellular networks, so even if you're not in a cellular area, you'll get uh, navigation, 3D maps, 2D maps, uh, navigate to contact feature, and uh, the maps are actually downloaded directly to your device, so you'll need about 2 gigs of free space, points of interest. Um, it's 50 bucks for a year, but it's only available for a limited amount of devices right now, so... <laughs> That's the thing, and it's fifty bucks on sale. So normal price is sixty bucks, and considering there are, are other options out there other than Google Maps for Android, but there's like MapQuest, uh, there's Wazi, there's a lot of other um, map uh, solutions that are cheaper or free that are, in my opinion, better than this. It's just the TomTom Tom name is so synonymous with really awesome GPS navigation that maybe they'll win that way, but I don't really see it. All right. So just so people understand what we mean by some devices aren't pat are compatible, we're talking the Galaxy S3. We're talking the HTC One X and the X Plus are not supported. We're talking the flagship Nexus 7 tablet and the Galaxy Note are not compatible. So those are an example of some of the ones that are not compatible with the TomTom Tom service. So, yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah that's a um, pretty big... Uh, 
<laughs> kittens you missed there. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not letting that one go, dude. Dude, I just looked it up. Anyway, I'm talking about it in a little bit. All right, so for the last thing I'll talk about is, actually, so check this out. I have a Galaxy S3. There was an over-the-air update that that went out, and that was to solve that previous issue that we talked about on a previous show about, um, you know, how people were able to dial a number and reset your phone from a number. I'm sure you remember that, right, Tony? Yeah. So the, when that over there update happened, all of a sudden I realized that my keyboard on my phone stopped working as well. It started freezing. Now, I could have easily just reinstalled Android and probably solved the problem, but no, I didn't. I'm not going to do that. So I've um, so instead of me going to try to solve the problem or find the SDK and reinstall it and kind of do it from scratch, I decided to look for another keyboard. And now, I, besides Swift Key and many other keyboards, one keyboard I just want to have tell people to definitely check out is called Super Keyboard. With a big S on the chest. And the screen is blank, Tony. Uh, it's called Super Keyboard. And it's made by a company called Beautiful Apps. They make beautiful apps. So the uh, keyboard, I just really, really liked it because it just worked extremely well. The keys are big and vibrant. And it looks nice. So I just wanted to say, check this out if you're looking for another keyboard option. This one was also free, so it didn't cost anything. And it's, it's significantly better than every default keyboard on any device I've typed on. It's just better. But it's like Swift Key because I like Swift Key a lot too. But Swift Key costs money. All right. All so right. I just wanted to bring that up. And then one last thing here, Tony. Do you remember a game called Defender in the arcade game? Yeah. It was, yeah. Aqua Kitty is Defender. Okay. It's Underwater Defender, is what it is. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, I just, I, I'm looking at the gameplay. I'm like, this is freaking Defender. Okay. I know this game. And just so change the name. Like, I still wouldn't buy it, but still. Yeah, change it. <laughs> anyway, this should change it to just Defender, and it probably would sell a lot of copies. Seriously. Yeah, cool. All right. All right, Sean, is there anything else that you want to add? Um, for the lucky person who gets the Mustabo case, good luck. I wish you the best of whoever you are, and I'm confident you will enjoy it. That much I will say. All right. Oh, also, um, within the next two weeks, we're gonna. I'm gonna get my review out of the iBolt uh, car holder system for the Galaxy S3. I'm gonna get that out. I'm gonna accompany it with video of driving in the car, sort of Gran Turismo style, but not driving too fast. And some other. And uh, I'm just gonna review it with pictures. So definitely keep your eyes open. It probably will be out in like a week, week and a half from now when I get a chance from vacation. But definitely check it out. And this is something you definitely want to keep your eyes open for. Here's the cases. Can't hear you, Tony. Here's the stuff that you can win here. There you go. The two yeah. cases. The uh, Petit Bobbin, Un Bobbin, you can win that. Uh, Sean, go ahead and let people know how they can contact you. Well, besides the group email at comments at lazytechguys.com, my Twitter handle is right there. Uh, 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 right there at ltgsean.com. LTG Sean. Behind me. <laughs> All right, and like you can see on screen, hopefully, uh, you can email us at comments at lazytechguys.com. Phone us at 707-722-5299. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Our YouTube channel is Lazy Tech TV, but you should know that if you're watching us live right now. Our website is lazytechguys.com. Um, you can follow me uh, on Twitter. That's probably the best way, um, LTG Tony. And uh, we're on all the uh, major podcast networks like uh, uh, Stitcher, Zoom, iTunes, BlackBerry, Blueberry. So if we're on a network, if we're not on a network that you want us to be on, definitely let us know. Uh, we want to be everywhere that we can be, um, and we appreciate the support. So <laughs> that's pretty team. much it. Yeah, we want to be, well, not everywhere, but we want to be, a, you know, the cool places. Well, I want to be everywhere. I want to be everywhere. I want everywhere. Anyway, yeah. Oh, also, hey, real quick, side note. Guys, if you like to dance and you like uh, R&B music, uh, go to my um, my uh, look up Sean Wilburn on SoundCloud. I added a new song up there called Round Brown. Yeah, it's I saw pretty, that. Yeah, it's a pretty fun song, guys. It's not. It's a uh, pretty fun, pretty song, pretty fun. So go ahead and check it out and tell me guys what you think about it. If you like it, shoot me an email. Let me know. All yes, right. Self promotion. Yes, I did it. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. We, uh, you know, we we're we're gonna support you, bro. Go to Sean's, the philosopher, right? That's the hip hop producer name, or Sean Wilburn, either or, same person. Right. I don't mind people knowing who I am. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. All right then. All right. Y'all have a good one. Thank you very much for watching the Wireless Weekly, part of the LTG Network. Uh, thank you to our sponsor, Audible.com. Get your free Audible trial at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. And uh, we're out of here. Y'all take care.